Calorimetry is an important thermodynamic setup that allows you to use the temperature change from the surroundings to give you information about the heat flow from the system. What we're going to do in this video is discuss the two different types of calorimeters and then go into an in-depth question on bomb calorimetry that can show you just how complex this topic can be. Let's start by taking a look at this classic equation with calorimetry here, where what you see is that QCal is equal to MCS delta T plus C delta T. What I like to do whenever I see this equation is break it apart into its components, where I see that this component right here, this MC delta T, is going to be the Q measured from your water that surrounds the reaction system. And I'm going to add this term to this right here, which represents the heat of my hardware. But both of these components add up to being my calorimeter. And if I took a little bit deeper of a look into each of these components, what I would see is that I have a mass times a specific heat capacity times a change in temperature plus a heat capacity times the same change in temperature. And I like to write out the units where I can see that this mass is going to be grams. The specific heat capacity is going to be in joules or even kilojoules per gram degree C. And this delta T is going to be degree C. Over here for the hardware, I don't have a specific heat capacity. And what this means is that the mass of that particular hardware should already be included in that term. This is what we call an extensive property. And what that means is it's already dependent on the amount that you have there. Therefore, this C hardware term already takes into account the mass of the metal or the wires or any other component that might be absorbing heat from the system. And so it's going to have units that are simply joules per degree C. And then you multiply that by the change in temperature, which is simply degree C. What you should observe if you canceled out all your units is simply that you get a joule component here plus a joule component is equal to the heat flow in joules. And of course, all of this could be in kilojoules or any other energy unit. But what I want you to see is just how things cancel out in case at some point in the math and the unit conversions you get a little bit lost, it's good to have this to fall back on. Once we get to this point, you need to remember the purpose of a calorimeter. And like I said earlier, the purpose of a calorimeter is to measure the temperature change of the surroundings to gain insight into the heat flow from the system. And so when you see this QCal, you should see that QCal is equal to Q of the surroundings. And so if I wanted to get into the perspective of the system, all I have to do is stick a negative sign in front of that. So negative Q of the surroundings is going to be equal to my Q of the system. From here, depending on the calorimeter that we're using, we're going to end up with one of two different values. The Q of system can either give you QP, which would be heat at constant pressure. And this is actually equal to, by definition, delta H of that particular reaction. However, if I ran the reaction in constant volume, I could get QV. So let's take a second and look at what state function this particular value can give us. So if we have delta U is equal to Q plus W, but in chemistry we are usually doing expansion work. So we can rewrite that W term as negative P delta V. So if we're at constant volume, and I can even stick a little subscript there, our work value has to be equal to zero because we're not having any expansion or compression. And therefore, this QV value gives us directly delta U. 
So to understand how we get from Q system to either delta H or delta U, we need to understand the two different types of calorimeters. For a coffee cup calorimeter, the idea is simply that you're running the reaction in water in an insulated container, just like a coffee cup. And in lab, you might even do a coffee cup calorimeter problem in a literal coffee cup. The essence of a coffee cup is that it keeps your beverage warm even on a cold day due to the fact that the container itself is resisting that heat flow from your coffee. And for the coffee cup calorimeter, the idea is the exact same. Now you're measuring heat at constant pressure here, and this is largely due to the actual reaction that you're running. You're not typically running a reaction with a change in gas moles in this case you're usually running a dissolution reaction that isn't changing volume anyway. So it's very easy to use this experimental setup to run a particular reaction at constant pressure. For an ideal coffee cup calorimeter, which would have a pure or perfect insulating container, you shouldn't have any change in temperature for that particular container. And therefore, it's quite often that you see this term completely disappears. So your Q cal is really just equal to the heat flow from the reaction system into the water surroundings. And as a final conclusion here, I wanna remind you that once you get to this Q cal value, it's important to realize that your thermometer is in the water surroundings. And therefore you need to make that value negative to get into the perspective of the system. And so negative Q cal is equal to QP, but we can also say it's equal to delta H. For a bomb calorimeter, your pressure can absolutely change because you're most likely dealing with a reaction with a change in gas moles. In this case, you're measuring heat at constant volume, but you should realize that everything is gonna be the same. Your Q cal is gonna be your Q of surroundings. You're gonna make that negative, and then your Q cal with a negative sign can be equal to delta U, which is that heat flow at constant volume. Now I'm gonna put a big star here with bomb calorimeters, and I wanna point out that this is for combustion reactions. And one thing you should know about combustion reactions is that they give off a ton of heat. So you should definitely expect a positive change in temperature for your surroundings. But what this means is that your Q for your system should always be negative in this, which means your delta U of the system, once you get to your final answer, should always be negative. And this should help you make sure that you don't make the most common mistake, which is you do all the math right. You navigate this challenging equation 100% correctly, but then you forget to flip the sign at the end. So what you wanna remember is that for a bomb calorimeter, you should always be dealing with a negative value. For a coffee cup calorimeter, you can definitely run endothermic or exothermic reactions. So you can't make the same conceptual assumption for a coffee cup calorimeter.